Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to evaluate these uh, three integrals using trigonometric substitution. Let's get started. First, let us evaluate integral of uh, x squared over square root of uh, 16 minus x squared dx. Because this radical here has the form square root of a squared minus x squared, we can use the substitution x equal to a sine of uh, theta. Therefore, we let uh, x to be equal to 4 sine theta, where theta is in this closed interval. Note that this restriction here for theta assures us that this function of theta has an inverse function. Now let us write our integral in terms of theta. So from this, we can write our dx as 4 cosine theta, which is equal to the derivative of this with, with respect to theta, and then times d theta. And an equivalent expression for this one is square root of 16 minus x squared is just equal to 16 minus the square of this, which is equal to 16 sine squared theta. And then when we factor out the 16, the other factor will be 1 minus sine squared theta. And as you can see by this substitution, this radicand here becomes a perfect square, 16 cosine squared theta. And by algebra, this square root here is just equal to 4 times the absolute value of cosine theta. But because of this restriction here, we know that the value of cosine theta is always greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, this absolute value of cosine theta is just equal to cosine theta. So now we can already write our integral in terms of theta. And we'll get here x squared. So that is equal to the square of this. So that is 16 sine squared theta. And then dx, which is equal to 4 cosine theta, d theta, and over the value of this radical, which is just equal to 4 cosine theta. And we can simplify our integrand by canceling these two. We'll get here 1, 1. So we'll get the integrand 16 sine squared theta. Now, how do we evaluate this integral? We simply use the half angle identity for sine squared theta. which tells us that sine squared theta is just equal to one half of the quantity one minus cosine two theta. And here we can easily find an antiderivative of one minus cosine theta. So of course we can still simplify this one, cancel, cancel, that becomes eight, and then that is one. So we can already find uh, an antiderivative of this, which is just equal to theta. And then antiderivative of cosine 2 theta is what? Sine of uh, 2 theta over 2. And if you multiply that by 8, you'll get here 4 sine 2 theta. So it is very helpful in a computation to know that the integral of a cosine of a linear function like ax plus b dx is just equal to sine of ax plus b and then all over a. Of course, a here is not equal to zero and then plus c. But of course, if you don't know this uh, formula here, you can do substitution to evaluate uh, this uh, integral here, integral of uh, cosine 2 theta d theta. So how do we do that? So we think of this uh, 2 theta as our u. So if uh, 2 theta is uh, equal to u, then our du is equal to 2 d theta. So this will be our du. 
But since our constant factor here is just equal to 8, so it's like finding antiderivative of 8 cosine 2 theta. So we have to multiply it by 4. So this is 4 times 2 will get that constant factor 8. So now this is already in the form integral of cosine u du. And what is integral of cosine u du? It is equal to sine u plus c. And of course, our u is equal to 2 theta. Now, how do we write our answer in terms of x? So here, we're going to draw a right triangle that is associated with our substitution. So here, x is equal to 4 sine theta. Therefore, sine of theta is equal to x over 4. So by SOKATOA, so if this is our acute angle theta, then the opposite side will be equal to x. And then the hypotenuse is equal to 4. And from these uh, two sides, we'll be able to find the other side, the adjacent side, which is equal to square root of the square of the hypotenuse, which is 16, minus the square of x. And from this uh, right uh, triangle, we can already find all trigonometric function values of theta. So uh, this will let us find the value of sine of uh, 2 theta using this uh, double angle identity for sine. So we have here sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta, cosine theta. And then sine theta is equal to x over 4. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is adjacent. This is square root of 16 minus x squared over hypotenuse, which is equal to 4. Now, how about a theta? So since uh, sine of theta is equal to x over 4, then we know that a theta here is just equal to the sine inverse of x over 4. So we can now write our answer in terms of x, and we'll get here 8 sine inverse of x over 4 minus 1 half. And how did we get this 1 half here? So again, we want to compute for 4 sine 2 theta. So multiplying this by 4, you multiply it by 4, cancel this 4 in the numerator and in the denominator. And we'll get here 2 over 4, which is equal to 1 half. And then times x times square root of 16 minus x squared, and then plus c. Now, you might wonder, is this expression still valid when theta is less than 0? or when theta is equal to pi over 2 or 0? The answer is yes. And I'll just leave it as an exercise on how to show that this is still valid for those uh, values of theta. Now, let's move to our second integral. So let's uh, evaluate integral of square root of x squared minus 9 over x dx. Since our radical square root of x squared minus 9 is in the form square root of x squared minus a squared. So we can use the trigonometric substitution x equal to a secant theta. So here we let x to be equal to 3 secant theta. And our theta belongs to this union of intervals 0 to pi over 2 and pi to 3 pi over 2. So if you still recall the graph of your secant function, then we know that a secant theta is 1 to 1 in this union of intervals. So we know that this function here has an inverse function. So by this substitution, we'll get the value of dx, which is just equal to the derivative of this. So that is a 3 secant theta tangent theta, and then times d theta. And this radical here, which is just equal to our numerator, can be written as square root of x squared. So it's the square of this. So that is 9 secant squared theta, and then minus 9. Factoring out the 9, we'll get the other factor, secant squared theta minus 1. And using the trigonometric identity involving secant theta and tangent theta, we know that this expression here is just equal to tangent squared theta. So therefore, 
This is equal to 3 times the absolute value of tangent of theta. And again, we use this restriction for theta and we know that tangent theta is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, we can write that absolute value as simply 3 tangent theta. So now we can already write our integral in terms of uh, theta. So this is just equal to 3 tangent theta. And then our dx is equal to this expression, 3 secant theta, tangent theta d theta, over our x, which is equal to 3 secant theta. And simplifying our integrand, we'll get here cancel, cancel, 1, 1. We'll get integral of 3 tangent squared theta d theta. Now, how do we evaluate this integral? So we can easily evaluate this by writing the tangent squared theta as secant squared theta minus 1. Again, using the Pythagorean identity tangent squared theta plus 1 equal to secant squared theta. And we know that this is already integrable. We can find its antiderivative. Antiderivative of secant squared theta is just tangent theta. Antiderivative of 1 is just a theta. So times a 3, you'll get there a 3 theta, and then plus the arbitrary constant c. And now to write this expression here, in terms of x, again, we construct our right triangle associated with our substitution equation. So from this, we know that a secant theta is equal to x over 3, but what is a secant theta? Secant theta is just the reciprocal of cosine theta. And we know that cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So therefore, this is hypotenuse over adjacent. So we'll get here a hypotenuse, which is equal to x. Adjacent is equal to 3. And from this, we'll get the other side, which is equal to square root of x squared minus 9. And again, we can use the trigonometric function values of theta. And again, the relationship that we can find here between theta and x is valid for all our theta in this union of intervals, not only for acute angle theta. So from this right triangle, what is the value of tangent theta? So tangent theta is just, again, from Sokatoa opposite over adjacent so that will be square root of x squared minus 9 over 3 and what is a theta again just take the inverse of both sides so secant inverse we'll get here theta equal to secant inverse of x over 3 so we can now write our answer as 3 times tangent theta which is equal to this expression minus 3 times theta, which is the secant inverse of x over 3, and then plus c. And our answer can be simplified to this expression. Okay, now let's move to our last integral. So let us evaluate this definite integral, integral from negative 2 to 2 of dx over quantity 4 plus x squared raised to 3 halves. So note here that our integrand 1 over this denominator is an even function. So function value at negative x is the same thing as function value at x. So the graph of this is symmetric about the y-axis. So when we evaluate this integral here, it is just equal to twice the value of this definite integral, integral from 0 to 2 dx over this uh, expression here. Now, if you look at our integrand, it contains an expression square root of uh, 4 plus x squared. So it is in the form square root of a squared plus x squared. And if we have this expression in our integrand, we may use trigonometric substitution. And we can use the substitution x equal to a tangent theta. So let's uh, try this uh, substitution. So here we let x to be equal to a. So this is your a squared. So a is equal to 2. And then tangent theta. 
And again here, theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And again, on this interval, we know that this has an inverse function. So this uh, function of theta here has an inverse uh, function. And uh, by this uh, substitution, we can find our dx, which is equal to the derivative of this, that is 2 secant squared theta, and then times d theta. And we can find an equivalent expression for this, which is just equal to 4 plus the square of x, square of this, you'll get 4 tangent squared theta, and then quantity raised to 3 halves. Factoring out the common factor 4, we'll get here 4 times the quantity 1 plus tangent squared theta. And again, by this substitution, we are able to write this expression as a perfect square. And when we raise this expression to 3 halves, we can just use uh, rule on exponents here because our secant theta is actually greater than or equal to 0. Secant theta is greater than or equal to 0 by this restriction. So therefore, in this case, what is 4 raised to 3 halves? So that is just square root of 4 and then you cube it. So square root of 4 is 2 raised to 3, so you'll get 8. And then this secant squared theta raised to 3 halves is just equal to secant cubed theta. Now, since we're evaluating definite integral, so if we change this x here in terms of theta, then we have to change also the limits of integration in terms of theta. So here we'll get, uh, so when x is equal to 0, so in this case, uh, 0 is equal to 2 tangent theta. So what is that angle theta that will give you tangent theta equal to 0? We have theta equal to 0. Keep in mind your theta must belong in this interval. Also, when x is equal to 2, so when x equals 2, then that means tangent theta is equal to 1. So what is that angle theta in this interval where tangent is equal to 1? So we know that angle theta is equal to pi over 4. So tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. So therefore, we can now write our definite integral in terms of theta. And we'll get here dx. So our dx is this, 2 secant squared theta d theta. And this denominator here is just equal to 8 secant cubed theta. Okay. And then we change as well the limits of integration. So x equals 0 corresponds to theta equals 0. x equals 2 corresponds to theta equal to pi over 4. Now simplifying our radicand, we'll get here cancel and then cancel, reduce by 2. And then this uh, 2 times 2 divided by 8. So we'll get here 1 over 2. So therefore, our integral is just uh, equal to this uh, expression. And what is 1 over secant theta? It is just equal to cosine theta. So we can easily evaluate this definite integral. So antiderivative of cosine theta is sine theta. And we evaluate it from 0 to pi over 4. So we first plug in pi over 4. So sine of pi over 4. And then minus plug in theta equal to 0. So 1 half sine of 0. And now we evaluate the sine. So sine of pi over 4 is just equal to square root of 2 over 2. And sine of 0 is just equal to 0. Therefore, the value of our definite integral is square root of 2 over 4.